Hello everyone, it seems I know most of people already here, but always happy to meet new one. And uh, today I'm gonna be talking mostly about automation in grants distribution and how we implemented this model within our platform. And, um, and because it's tightly aligned with evaluation of scientific research, and as Philip, by the way, already mentioned that uh, funders need to screen projects and screening is n mostly about evaluation. And if we want to automate this process, if we want to get uh, rid of uh, all these like huge operational costs during this process, we need also uh, to get somehow evaluation more decentralized, more trustworthy. Okay, let me f check. Yeah, is it the right presentation? Okay. so. It seems it's not possible to distribute grants without involvement from scientist side uh, because uh, scientific projects I are really complex. If, and if it's a uh, uh, domain-specific complex project, only scientists who has this expertise within this uh, discipline can uh, and uh, able to evaluate this and receive uh, and pro provide for funders, for decision makers, information about is it viable, is it feasible, is it good project design, is it uh, worth to fund. So, and actually it's kind of a review, and this review, uh, all this review is put inside into uh, funders, into their process, and we put trust on them that they do this appropriately, they do it they do this efficiently, that they spend all this operational f cost they consume in efficiently uh, to determine quality, determine scientific contribution of each research. Uh, but really it's, uh, it's uh, kind, kind of uh, a process uh, which can be uh, um, in, in improved, it ob obviously, every, every, everything can be improved. And, but if it could be decentralized and, uh, and put into open access and results of this evaluation put into open access, uh, then everyone can use it. Everyone can use it to make a decision on uh, a, either to fund the research, either to publish this research, either to join to this research group as a uh, junior PhD student. So um, let me start a bit from, uh, from describing a bit our platform. And here are our uh, main tokens within our system. There are six uh, type of tokens within our system. And first one is a DAPE token. Uh, it's internal currency. It's the most simple one. Uh, because it's like store and of value and just money, just currency within the system. And another token is uh, expertise tokens, uh, which represents scientific contribution, expertise contribution of each individual within a system. And this is actually the core of the system. These tokens are used also for evaluation of scientific projects and for governments of world system. Uh, research tokens, uh, I'm not going to talk a lot of the about them uh, today, but it's also another opportunity to fund a research project because research tokens represent ownership of research and can be used also for investment, for investment into scientific research to receive, uh, as an investor, I c by investing into research project, I will be able to receive corresponding part of all future income from IP, from pro products spinned off from this research project. Uh, research group token is a government for research group and mostly like voting token, voting shares of research group. Uh, common token is a technical token which allocates uh, throughput within a network. And journal token is also a very interesting um, uh, model for journals. Uh, which will avoid conflict of interest with research projects. Because currently journals obviously have this conflict of interest. Uh, journals were designed to promote good research and 
uh, disseminate scientific knowledge. But because of conflict of interest and commercial model, now they like more uh, chasing hype, chasing like profit, and um, and this is not definitely not like a good way to promote science, promote quality. And journal token is a uh, is kind of uh, a fund, a venture fund, which invests into research token and therefore incentivized to invest into best projects within a system. And portfolio of venture fund is a like a journal, which uh, which uh, shows what this journal have invested in, and they will receive also revenue from what they invested in. So that's why uh, now they, their interest is aligned with the research, and then what want to invest into best research, most promising research, which will generate most impact in future. Okay, so uh, now let's get back to funding because it's uh, first of all it's main topic of my today talk. Uh, within our system, uh, we have two major classes, two major categories of funding within the system. And um, first one is external, which requires some external funding from government, from private fund foundations to come to the system and then be distributed within the system. Uh, and this external funding involves both investment and grants. And another funding is internal. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's coming from emission of internal currency and represents a kind of basic research for, inv for basi basic uh, income for researchers. So uh, every block, uh, every three seconds with our blockchain, there is emission of internal currency. Uh, which is distributed across research projects, across researchers, as a reward for their scientific contribution. It's, uh, uh, and you don't need to trust anyone. So if you've done scientific contribution, you will be awarded by protocol. And it's all in the algorithm. So you don't uh, need uh, any intermediary for this. Uh, and grants also can be automated with this system because the same way we distribute uh, a reward from internal currency, grants can be allocated for specific discipline and distributed to research projects within this discipline. Uh, and to distribute these grants, we actually need a quantified index of scientific contribution of each research. And this is what we... Uh, this is what we have done for evaluation of scientific research within our system. We designed a mathematical model which produces quantified index of scientific contribution of each research within each discipline. And using this quantified index, a uh, smart contract can distribute funds both from internal currency and both from external grants between these research projects. Uh, and this uh, also uh, works for basic research. So you can uh, be rewarded even by doing basic research because uh, in our system, a part of reward also distributed to references. And if your basic research is referenced a lot uh, from other research projects, which earns some revenue within the system, earns some income within the system, uh, your basic research will be rewarded from all uh, research projects which are based on knowledge you created. So, and this is kind of returning back a value for basic research which a bit lost uh, during past uh, year, 100 years. Uh, and uh, by doing basic research you still will be rewarded from everything, every knowledge produced from this basic research. Yeah, so uh, uh, grants distribution, as I said, can be automated uh, within a system. So uh, let me tell a bit more how it works. Uh, let's imagine you have $10 million 
which you want to distribute across research projects uh, during one year in quantum optics discipline. And you want this money to be distributed to most deserved, deserved project. So within a system, there is, uh, there is uh, a smart contract where you can allocate this money and it will be distributed during gradually one, during one year this money across research projects in this specific discipline accordingly to their index of scientific contribution. And all results of what it was distributed to, uh, when to what research projects can be audited because it's in public blockchain and you can track why it was distributed to this research, what was uh, proportion, what was ratio of index, scientific contribution index during that peri period of time. And you can like analyze whole history anytime. And actually it also can, can help us and scientific community enhance the system because after, uh, af after uh, all this happens, uh, all this data can be used for, to enhance the model of this distribution. Yes, and because all this really uh, rely on results of decentralized assessment, it should be, and, and this scientific contribution index produced by the system, it should be really trustworthy and uh, efficient in terms of how it produced. So it should really uh, reflect uh, real scientific contrib contribution of this research. So that's why I also uh, decided to t tell you a bit more about how it's done. Um, so main idea is uh, that we can have, we can, we already have, uh, we in in, uh, in scientific um, community. There is all f all already uh, review, peer review, and this review happens both when you publishing, when you applying for a grant, uh, when you uh, when you just receiving the feedback from uh, scientists from your discipline, and. The problem is that uh, this review is not really uh, representative. Uh, if you are not an expert, even if you have a review, you don't know what, is, wh what it exactly tells, tells about this project. So is it, uh, um, uh, what is exactly scientific contribution of this research? So uh, we designed a system where uh, scientists can already have incentive within this system, uh, have incentive to assess research projects and uh, results of this assessment uh, are used to produce quantified index of scientific contribution which further can be used by funders, by journals and by society to understand what is the scientific contribution of this research. And uh, our, uh, re our assessment, decentralized assessment process is, uh, is kind of a two-level assessment process because we have a review uh, level where scientists can uh, do a review and assign expertise tokens to each review. So it's actually uh, automatically assigned. Once you uh, write a review to research project, the sum of your expertise tokens in the discipline of this research is assigned to review. But also uh, uh, each review can be supported by uh, expertise token holders within the discipline of research. And, um, and this, uh, this information is used to produce index of scientific contribution. So basically um, <coughs> our system takes into account what was the order of approving and rejecting review? What was the time uh, delay between each review? How much, what was the expertise of reviewer? How much support each review received? And all this information is used to produce this final index of scientific contribution and, it, uh, and uh, research starting getting it even on early stage, which can be used for early grants distribution and then uh, during the enhancement and of the uh, of scientific project, this index will grow and will let community funders and journals uh, identify uh, 
uh, identify good research within a system. And um, this index is also used to distribute newly created expertise tokens. Because as you see, expertise tokens is a main governance mechanism within a system, and it's also a reputational recognition reward for a scientist. So uh, you, I, if I have an expertise token within a quantum optics, and it means that I did a scientific contribution there. And I cannot transfer these tokens. They're not transferable. And uh, they just belong to me and, re and represents my scientific contribution within this discipline. And uh, therefore, th there is constant emission of expertise tokens, as well as internal currency. And the size of emission depends on activity within this discipline. So the more activity, the more expertise tokens emitted. And they are distributed to each discipline, proportionate to activity within a discipline. And then uh, they are distributed between two pools, research pool and review pool. And, s and proportion is self-balanced. It's automatically balanced depending on proportion of review and research within a system, so uh, within a discipline. So if there is not enough review within a discipline, the more tokens, expertise tokens, will be allocated to review pool to incentivize more review within this discipline, to incentivize quality. Uh, and yeah, so and further, they are distributed to actually researchers and reviewers, reviewers as recognition reward of, as a reputational reward. And the same way, almost the same way as the expertise tokens, there is uh, emission of internal currency, which is distributed as a financial reward, as a basic income for scientists and for reviewers. And what is also very important is that wall system, wall infrastructure, because we have developed our own blockchain and we were able to introduce new consensus algorithm, which actually governs wall the system. And uh, this consensus algorithm ensures that wall system is belong, uh, belongs to scientists and only scientific, scientific community can come to consensus to change it or, or update it. So this consensus algorithm, we call it delegated proof of expertise contribution, which means that scientists uh, vote for block producer with some of his uh, or sh uh, her expertise tokens, and block producers uh, kind of delegated to maintain the network. But only scientific community can come to consensus to change rules, to change how, uh, how this index of scientific contribution is produced. And they have all uh, tools uh, to, um, to evolve the system because all data is public and we will also open source, uh, we will also open source all tools we created for uh, during development of the system. So actually, uh, one of major tool for this is our uh, agent-based simulation model framework to um, which we're using to create our crypto economy, to create economy of a blockchain. Uh, this simulation framework allows us to uh, emulate how, uh, how this distribution will behave, what will be results uh, of this distribution, and tune the model to achieve uh, efficiency. And um, yeah, so, uh, this is a high-level model of organizational structure where you can see uh, that uh, grants and investment uh, can be distributed through the platform and uh, we will also create endowment foundation which will, be which will initiate grant distribution within the system. Yeah, so th there are two sentences which actually represent all why we're working on this and why we're so passionate about this. Uh, and uh, actually, this is uh, this, this two sentences is the end of our white paper, and I enc encourage you to read it and provide the feedback if you want. Yeah. Thank you.